On this episode, I make the rear buffer, starting from an offcut of square bar and finishing with a curved face without the use of a rotary table. Welcome to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. I'm starting work with this piece of mild steel square bar. It had already been machined square for another project, so that's a great head start. It's a bit oversized, so the first step would reduce it down using my 50mm diameter carbide insert face mill. This is my go-to for removing material in a hurry. Once the bar's down to size, it's time to work on the length. I take a cut on one end, flip the bar, and take a pass on the other end. From here I can check it, set the digital readout, and make the final cut. With the part to length, the next step is a hole through the centre. The hole I'm after is 10mm square, so I'm using a 3mm end mill and with the digital readout set, I move around the four sides and repeat with multiple passes, quietly working my way down. Once I've gone as far as I can with the 3mm end mill, I move to removing the centre material. I could have done it the other way around, but it doesn't make a lot of difference. With the centre material removed, it's time to drill a couple of holes. My spotting drill has gone walkabout. So I had to find a quick alternative, in this case a 6mm drill bit. Not quite as rigid as a stubby spotting drill, but certainly better than the 3mm drill bit that follows it. With that done, it's time to start work on the sides. For this I'm using a 6mm end mill, which is sized about right for the features I'm cutting.
somewhere along the way here, I crashed the tool and chipped the corner of the end mill. On reflection, the key lesson to be learned here was I was cutting a slot with the end mill cutting on both sides as it made the cut. And it grabbed suddenly and took up the lead screw slack, jolting the table forward. I should have known better and the way to avoid this would have been to have the brakes on lightly, just dragging enough to stop the table jumping forward if it grabbed. And as a result, I got a reminder on the corner of my end mill that I recently purchased. So lesson learnt, until next time I'm not paying attention. With the four sides machined, I've got a quick hole to drill. This is where the link will eventually be fixed. Next up I need a rectangular hole in the front of the buffer. Once again for this, I'm using a 3mm end mill and working my way around the rectangular hole using the digital readout for location. With that out of the way, I thought I'd round a couple of corners. So I'm using this 3mm corner radius end mill. The trick with these is to run them nice and slow, so you can extend the life of the tool as much as possible. The base plate on this buffer has a couple of angles on the ends. So I use an angle block to set the part on. This is a quick way to set an angle for a part, assuming it's one of the standard angles that's in the set. Right, that concludes the work on the mill. Given my success with media blasting lately, I thought we'd do the same to this part. This softens the corners and removes the machining marks, making it look more like the casting that I'm trying to replicate. Okay, and here we have the result of the media blasting. I had the back face masked up, so that stayed as a machined face where it affixed the buffer beam. Now let's look at an alternative to the rotary table. We're cutting a curved face. This method uses a lathe and a face plate, and I've made up a small angle block to mount the part on. The only thing I'd note is that the angle block could have been more rigid, and I think that would have given me a cleaner result. Once I was finished on the lathe, I cleaned up the part using an abrasive disc. This removed the machining marks on the face and shined it up a bit. 
And here we have the final part. Pretty for mounting. The real trick with this part was getting the sequencing right. If I'd started with the sides, I would add nothing to hold on to. So it was really a process of elimination, quietly working my way to the final part. But this is true for many of the parts that are required for this build, and I'm sure many of you will come across too. So just think, how can I break the operations down? Which ones do I need to do first? And which ones can wait till closer to the end? I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, I enjoyed making this part. It's another step closer for the project, and I look forward to seeing you for the next episode. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and share it with a friend. And I'll catch you next time.